Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us at the LD4P 2020. My name is Danush Davudi, and I'm a metadata specialist at the University of Alberta Libraries. And today I'm showcasing a tool, an open source tool that we have developed here for experimenting uh, with mark, converting mark data to BitFrame or linked data format. So, and I should uh, put a disclaimer here that this uh, source, uh, this uh, tool is completely open source and we can use it. Everyone can use it and I will show you the links and the GitHub pages later on. Okay, so let's start with linked data. So I'm gonna briefly talk about this because this is the obvious part. So we need URIs, identifiers, we need HTTP, which is the dominant per protocol in the web. And we need to use Sparkle and RTF schema so that we can query. And also, well, the obvious part is that we have to link to other people's data sets or data sources so we can create that linkage that linked data is all about. So in libraries, for more than 50 years, the dominant format was Mark, Mark 21. And recently we have been moving to our linked data and we have been using RDF and OW and uh, the uh, prevalent schemas that are in the web right now. However, we realized that this is not all inclusive and we need a more, extensive format for library data, BibFrame, which all of you know about. So at University of Alberta, uh, we have been implementing linked data into some of our projects. So our educational uh, research and archive era, which is our is, is, is institutional repository, has been uh, developed with some of the linked data platform and linked data format in mind. We also are working uh, on another project called Calink, which is an aggregator for uh, all the Canadian theses, uh, and which is being uh, <coughs> represented in linked data format. We are also part of the Castle Initiative with the Share with the E and LD4P initiatives. Okay, well, while we were working on these and we were part of these initiatives, we said, okay, maybe we can do something in the house, and because we want people to have more familiarity with the linked data and the linked data formats. So, and this was the knowledge that we had at the time. So we had a knowledge of XSLT and XML, and we had a, a license for oxygen software. We had some knowledge of Python. We had knowledge of the bash scripting or shell scripting, and also we had the access to open refine and knowledge about open refine. So based on, the, on that knowledge, here's what, we can, here's what we developed. So we used a mark file, a mark format. We used uh, PyMark, which is a Python package, and we used the title to convert that mark file to a XML file, a, a mark XML file. And then we used the mark to BibFrame X2 XSLT, which is the style sheet from Library of Congress. And this is out of the box. We didn't modify anything in here. So we convert it to BibFrame uh, file. And then for ease of processing, we use a shell script that will convert, like converge or merge all of these, how many uh, XML or BibFrame file into one file because it's always easier to process one file rather than thousands of files. And then we create a custom XSL which is names.xsl, which will create a TSV that will extract all the names and the example.org URIs. These example.org URIs are the URIs that are given to the XML file to the, uh, once it's, when it is converting the uh, uh, mark XML to BitFrame, uh, this XSL style, We'll assign this example.org URI, which I will tell you why we're using this later on. But our pilot was all about agents. So we were trying to enrich the agent names in the BibFrame file with URI. So that's why it's called names. And then, as I mentioned, we input that into an open refine, which we were using two separate processes for Library of Congress and YF APIs. And and all of these, as I mentioned, are available in GitHub as well. So once we have that uh, call from the, from the API, then we will use a similarity function to compare the similarity of these two strings. And if it was over a threshold, we assign that 
uh, URI to that name. So the TSV was outputted, which has the LC and YF, and also the example.org. And then we use another uh, custom XSL file, which and we use this original BitFrame file, which we will create an enhanced file. So here's an example of it. So let's say, as I mentioned, we are using BitFrame agents. So this is one agent that we get, and here's the output of the, that first XSL TSV. So we have the name, we have the example.org, and we have the type, because as many of you might know is that uh, once we are uh, querying these APIs, we have the option to say, okay, just query the personal, I just query corporate names, so that's why it's included. And this is the output of the open refine. So as you can see, we still have the example.org, we, we have the name, and we have these two LC and YFU, like IDs, which is, we can convert it to URIs easily. So, and this, this example.org, we use this to search that XML file, that BitFrame file to see, okay, this is the one that we have to replace. So we replace this LC ID here, and also we add the YF in the, uh, another statement. So very simple. Uh, here's a table that shows the processes. As I mentioned, this process was using different platform, different tools, and somehow it was a little bit cumbersome and time consuming. As you can see, I've listed some of the times. So due to that reason, and due to the, the fact that we had a decent knowledge of Python, so we decided to go and consolidate all of these platforms into one, and namely here we use a, a web development framework in, uh, framework in Python, Django, and we created a, uh, <clears throat> a user interface, and we also added the flexibility of choosing between API, so you don't have to search all the APIs, you can choose just one or two, or whatever, and then we did some, uh, create some reports of your processes. Also, we added the uh, ability to do multiple processing at the same time. Again, we had the BitFrame and Mark as input, and also we kept the merging of BitFrame files so it would be easier to process. Okay, so, and here's the API, here's the list of APIs that we used. So it's two APIs from Library of Cumber, Congress and three APIs from YF. And we also use another API because the second phase of our pilot, we said, okay, we can add something. So we uh, decided to go with the experimental work IDs from OCLC so, or WordCat. So we added a six API, it isn't listed here, but we added that so we can enrich also titles. And this is the uh, process that we developed. So everything is in Python. So this is the input file, the BitFrame file, and a, an XSLT will extract, as I mentioned, now that we had the title as well, the, the ingest key, which is that example.org. Uh, and we have the authors, how many authors we have. Then we give this, we <coughs> search this, uh, search the WordCat search API with the title and author, and we will get something like this. Let's say an entry like this. And then we will compare this OCLC author and OC, OCLC author and OCLC title with the author and title that we have. And if again the similarity score was let's say over ninety five percent, we you know, okay, find the match, and we use this ID to search the WordCat. And then once we did that, the JSON file that we get, we could access the work ID. And then with another XSLT, we use this all of these data to, to enhance this, this BIP frame file to a BIP frame file, so to, to enhance BIP frame file, per se. And this is the statistical data that I mentioned about. It doesn't have a lot of things, but could be useful to some people. And here's our tool. Here's the tool that we have. As you can see, it's very simple, very bare bone. It doesn't have a lot of visuals or anything, because it's just an experimental tool. Uh, okay, once you press start, you have the option of choosing your, like uploading your file. So you have the option of choosing mark file or BitPrint file. And once you do that, it goes into an SQL database. We just use the default SQL database of the Django because it was it's supposed to do a lot of processing. So it goes here, all your files are saved here. That you have uploaded, you have your upload time, you have your data type, so BitPrint, 
or mark data. And then, as I mentioned, you can choose the number of APIs. So you can see we have five, but the work ID, the OCLC API is already built in. So we didn't give you the option to choose or deselect that. So that's all the building. So any of these APIs that you work with will also include that. So then you can select the number of files that you want and then any of these APIs and that is a good process. And also you can see here that we have the option of merging the files. So if you have like any like select five of these and you click this option, then all those five will be merged into one and will be one process. And the reason for that is that our processes was limited to four at the time because both the instance, the cloud instance that we were implementing this on had like uh, eight threads. So we didn't want to go over four threads just for overloading stuff. But like you have the option of changing this in the car, as I said, the code is open source. You have, to ch you have the option of changing it to as many processes. But the default code that we have limit the processes to four. So it's a good option to merge some of your files so you can have more processes at the same time. Okay, so this is once you press process, you go here or you can access it by the visit processing queue. And you can see this is our, this is a mark file and this is an XML file and you have the options of the, looking at your real time processes and see what process it is at or just stop it. And this is the process archive. So every file that you've processed, you will get a result of it. So this is that shows that, okay, the details shows that how many like names were matched from the LC, how many names were matched from the YF, YF personal and all of these and the time that it took and the number of files that was enraged or whatever. And so, Basically, that is it. So as I mentioned, this is a tool for exploration. So this is meant for maybe a smaller institution that want to start working with linked data and explore better feeds and see what is it about. And well, it's definitely not something that can be compared with uh, LD4 or Share VDE, but just an open source tool. And we are hoping that we can add these functionality to it as well in the future. And also, as I mentioned, this is the uh, GitHub page that we have the code. So uh, everything here, both both of the versions of the API, uh, or sorry, both of the versions of the tool, like the Django version and the free, the other uh, version that we're using, the multiple components are here, so you can easily access that. So, well. I guess that will be it. Well, thank you everyone. And uh, thank you for watching this and hopefully that we can get your feedback. You can use the tools and we really, really appreciate your feedback on this. Thank you so much.